Hi there, I'm going to show you how to make a simple track using the RC505 going through some of the features as well. First thing you probably want to do is choose an input effects. Now you can record it dry, but if you're not planning on doing anything fancy with filters or guitar to bass, I'd start with putting a reverb on it. So at the moment I've selected reverb using the A channel and I've turned that up to about 10 o'clock and it gives a nice kind of bright, a nice bright tone to my voice. One, two, three, one, two, three. This helps you to sound like you're in a hall or something like that to just broaden the sound a little bit. When we're recording our loop, you might want to think about what you're going to sing um, and then maybe practice that a few times before you hit the record button. So that's what I'm going to go for. I'm going to sing that a couple of times and then whilst I'm singing the loop, I'm going to press the record button here and that will then engage the recording function. When I've reached the end of my bar, uh, the bar's phrase, then I'll press it again and that will cut it off. And then the loop station will then de decide the tempo and the length of the loop. So as you can see, it's already decided the tempo using, it's assumed that I'm in 4-4. If I want to change that, however, I can press this rhythm edit button and then scroll through and change the beat. And then I can change what time signature I'm in. So you've got one track already recorded now. It sounds like this. You might want to then think about adding some different tracks. And then for this, you know, we can start to introduce these other tracks uh, here, two, three, four, and five. Um, so I'm going to record a bass line, um, I'm going to just have a think about what I want to record and I'm also going to select guitar to bass, so I've gone on to input C and then I'm going to choose one of these effects, guitar to bass is the one I've chosen, um, and this sounds like this. So what it starts to do is to lower the octave of my voice, you know, affect the sound, compress it a little bit, so it means that I can go a lot lower than I could with just my voice normally. So one thing you can do if you don't want to record uh, the same length as the first track you've recorded, you press the edit button and then go forwards and scroll through to the uh, measure button. It's on, already on automatic, so if you leave it on automatic, it will record the same amount of time as you did for the first track. I actually want it to be a bit longer than that, so I'm going to choose two bars. Do, da, do. In fact, four bars. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Okay, so there's my four bar phrase. So now when I hit record on this channel, it'll record for four bars instead of two bars that I did for my first one. So let's give it a go. <laughs> So already now I've got a really, really kind of funky groove that's going on and I can start to mix that if I want to. I can use the faders on here to increase or decrease the volume. I can also start to use the track effects, which means I can kind of retroactively um, engage some effects. So what I can do is I can use things like beat repeat, which will help this piece sound even better. Or even things, simple things like reverb or things like that. So if I go in here and find uh, reverb, 
there it is. And what I can do is just add extra reverb to all the channels I've already recorded on. There might be instances where you think, actually, I don't want reverb to happen to all of the channels. And there's a way you can change that. So if, for instance, I know that I've recorded with reverb on track one anyway, I don't need to put any more reverb onto that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the edit button once I've I've selected the track effects, then I press the edit button and you'll see that it will stop flashing. Okay, and this means that only the tracks that are flashing with the edit button green will be affected by the track effects. So when I'm playing now, only track two is being affected at the moment. Okay, when we start to record three, four and five, we can decide if we want to put reverb onto those as well. So hopefully, if you've been following some simple steps, you'll have five different tracks. They might be the same length or different lengths. Um, and you'll be able to kind of have a whole piece ready to go. And you can kind of shape and mold that as you go through it using track effects, using stop starts, um, and some of the more maybe in-depth features of the RC505. When you've got all five tracks, <laughs> You can start to think about how are we going to listen to these individually. Yes, you could listen to them individually on the RC505, but if you are in a teaching application and you've had a small group maybe performing and creating these different tracks and you want to hear what each individual track sounds like away from the classroom, you can plug the RC505 into your computer and then open uh, up the files either in Logic or uh, Studio One or Cubase or any DAW and then you can start to edit and kind of uh, really hone in on some of these individual tracks. What will happen is as you plug it in, you'll be able to select RC505 as an external drive, and then you'll be able to go into each single uh, memory block, and then inside each memory block, there are five different tracks with the recorded tracks that you've done. Um, and you'll be able to do that for assessment, or if you want to perhaps take what you've done here and then really start to delve into kind of great detail with different effects, different filters, maybe illustrating uh, the, the power of filters and what's actually going on, you know, inside this machine, you could actually do that using a different machine as well. Um, so that's kind of the power really in, you know, this piece of equipment is that you can really start to look at what's been going on beforehand and as a, you know, a final product, which sounds really, really cool. <laughs>